There's no private entity that has the right to take my life, liberty, or property, correct? Right. I have a right, a legal remedy right to redress my grievances with the United States, right? Well, I did. And then I was denied all legal remedy all the way up to the Supreme Court. Well, that was the moment that the government violated my rights. What's the most important word in the right to free speech? Let me ask you, what's the, what's the most important word in the right to free speech? This is, is it, this is, is it, profound. Is it the? You got it. <laughs> well, I follow you on Twitter. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, all right. So, so the word the is what's called a definite article, right? It's English language. It means that we know what it is. It, it was actually James Madison once argued in, in defense of free speech that it was the most important word because it already exists. We know what it is, right? There's a difference between a White House and the White House. Yeah. You all know what I'm talking about. Your audience knows what I'm talking about. I haven't said anything except the White House. I have right? a White House. Yeah, you have yeah. a White House. I have a White House. But there's the, the White, White House, House, right? Right. Well, if you look at this sentence again, it says, any action voluntarily taken in good faith to restrict access to or availability of material that the provider or user considers to be obscene. Um, it says, oh, sorry, I'm reading the wrong one. It's section one. No, yeah, no provider or user of an interactive computer service shall be treated as the publisher or speaker of any information provided by another content provider. So the publisher or speaker specifically is another information content now, provider. Now, hold on. So what you're arguing is nowhere does it say a, uh, in which case Correct. the argument could be made that certainly the speaker of the information is Libby, but YouTube is also a publisher. A pub exactly. There is, and I can say this, and it is factually correct. There is nothing in that law that says we cannot treat them as a publisher for their own publishing conduct. Are you in the courts right now with that argument? You got it. How does a judge tell you you're wrong? The, the law does not say any it, – it, the law should be very specific. It should say if the intent was to totally identify – Correct. It should say no provider or user of an interactive computer service shall be treated as the publisher, comma, a publisher, comma, or in any way uh, responsible for the publishing of – information coming from a et cetera, et cetera. even if they mess with it and whatever it's like that and the question that we've asked now twice to the supreme court is and, and think about this question for a minute does section 230c1 protect any publishing conduct whatsoever the answer is no it goes back to what you were saying earlier it's when they fail to remove content they cannot be treated as the publisher or speaker who put it there or did anything with it it doesn't protect their own publishing mm. and in my case it did it protected not only all of it. It protected it to the point that we said that doesn't make any sense because if they can't be treated, held accountable for their own publication decisions, at least they have to be a Good Samaritan. And you know what the judge did? The judge removed Good Samaritan from the entire law. They said, oh, that doesn't apply to C1. Hmm. It's the headline of the whole thing. It's like the whole point. Section yeah. C is Good Samaritan. Correct. It's the whole premise. They have to be a Good Samaritan. So now, do, do, do you know the origin of the quote? Can I pull that up? How, of the, of yeah, the like, Good what, Samaritan? No, it's just it's it's what Congress made the intelligible principle of the affirmative defense. Right. That's that's the basic premise. But here's the kicker: they did something in my case that set them up. Right. We, we had to go. This has been an incredibly long grind. Six years, two trips to the Supreme Court. We've argued the right thing. To answer your question, Tim, why are they getting it wrong? They're not. They're not even letting me in the door. They have denied me a single hearing in six years. Now, that's changing. We'll get to that in a minute. Well, but venue matters, you know. That's go find a Trump judge in uh, West Virginia, and maybe you'll get through the door. And everybody you're knows You're in it. California, yep. right? You, yes. You go to California. I sued him in Northern District of California. Because I was so early on in this, I didn't think we could beat the forum selection clause of the, of that yep. stupid terms of service. Yep. So here we are in the Northern District, not being able to get in the court. We have a definitive reason why. So textually, I'm correct. Mm -hmm. It says what it says. Do what it says. That's all I'm saying to do. C2 would then have a purpose because then if they do anything at all, any consideration, C2A applies. But now here's your question. I'm going to answer the good faith thing. No, there's no legal definition. But you know who just gets to decide what is and is not good faith? People miss this. Mm -hmm. It's not a judge and it's not big tech. It's a jury of your peers. But yeah, that If it goes sense. to a jury of your peers, now you're at, you're at trial and the merits of the case will decide. And that jury, because they're private entities, it's not government censorship. It's, it's private entities deciding. So all of a sudden this thing becomes constitutional. But see, when they took the Good Samaritan piece out, and so now they can do 
all publication decisions, regardless of the motive, that's what's called unfettered immunity, meaning they could do anything. Well, wait a second. Well, wait, wait a second. There's no private entity that has the right to take my life, liberty, or property, correct? Right. I have a right, a legal remedy right to redress my grievances with the United States, right? Well, I did. And then I was denied all legal remedy all the way up to the Supreme Court. Well, that was the moment that the government violated my rights. Everybody talks about the rights being violated by big tech. Nope. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until the government denied me all access to legal remedy that my due process was harmed. And that was when we went back around again to the Northern District. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a crazy story. We go back to Judge White in Northern District, California, right? And we filed something called a Procedural Rule 5.1. It's a constitutional challenge. This is a whole different game. This is, hey, wait a second. This law has been applied in a way that is unconstitutional. It has concretely and particularly injured my rights. There's a whole section in Procedural Rule 5.1 that says non-forfeiture. Mm -hmm. You know what that means, right? You, they don't get to forfeit this one. This is my rights. Courts are have to do this. So now I backed them into a corner. You know what happened? Next thing we know, we get a, a notice. Judge White has voluntarily recused himself. Wow. Interesting. Five years into litigation, he backs wow. out. Just gone. We did a little digging wait, later wait. into his finances. Millions in tech stock. Oh. Wow. He shouldn't be handling any big tech. Not if, you know, not you know, he's handled a lot yeah. of them. And as an aside, too. <laughs> these politicians know that if they if, if any one of these politicians comes out and says, we're going to take a stand against big tech in Section 230, Google, Facebook, all of them just smirk and say, downrank this politician. Mm -hmm. And then they don't appear anymore and they can't run ads. And we've seen it happen. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that, too. I, this, this is it's fascinating when you start to understand where it all broke. But see. Now that we've we've gone through the textual issue, we've gone through the intent, which is Good Samaritan because they took that out. Now we have a constitutional challenge up against it. The judge recuses himself, right? And in comes an Obama appointment judge. Hmm. Did they have money in oh. too? <laughs> I, we, we don't know yet, but I can tell you this. His decision was get out of my court until you give me a Supreme Court decision – we don't want to hear it. We don't care that there's six or seven other cases that are militating towards your direction. Um, and there's a – and I kid you not. This is one of those. This is so aggravating. The Northern District – there is actually a judge in here who is honest and smart. It's great. Judge Alsop. Decision called Dangard versus Instagram. And I can tell every lawyer that is listening to this broadcast, go look that case up. It is the Holy Grail. It is the Rosetta Stone. They unlocked it. The factual background of that case, the basics of it, is mm -hmm. identical to my case. It was my advertiser and uh, – so, so my straight line competitor and my advertiser being in cahoots with one another effectively to push me out of business. And that's what happened there is that, except in that case it was OnlyFans. Okay. And they – and Judge Allison nails it. He goes, to approve Meta's defense, still Facebook, <laughs> go figure, right? would be a backdoor to CDA immunity contrary to its history and purpose. The backdoor he's talking about is C1 would be used to absolve all publishing backdooring C2's uh, evidentiary requirements. You, you circumvent it. And that's what happened in my case. It's what happened in, in two and a half decades of precedent. So now the Ninth Circuit is, is sitting on a ton of crap Mm -hmm. That they're going to have to undo. I mean, this is this is monstrous. Now, to your point, we were talking about being a content provider, right? Go back down to two thirty F three again. F three, you said. Well, it is the other slide. Yeah. It information says, content provider. Any person or entity that is responsible in whole or in part for the creation or development of information provided through the internet or any other interactive computer service. So almost all the judges have been focused on creation. So is. You even kept saying it, create, 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 create. Create is bringing content into existence, right? Like if I – this coin thing that's sitting in front of me here. If I make that coin, that's creation. If I rip it, I've changed it in a way. That's also creation. And so what I, if I, I do that? I'm going to jump ahead of you. It says development. Correct. When YouTube – tells us explicitly what we can or cannot say without removal, they have directly involved themselves in the development of our content. Correct. Right. That's aggregation, the whole purpose of aggregation. 
And people say, well, then how are they going to aggregate content without development? And I'll say, it's very simple. You know, they always use a newsstand in a, in a, or a bookstore as sure. an example of how Section 230 works. Yeah. It's completely wrong. Yeah. I'll give you a much better example. Ready for it? Public library. People, citizens are allowed to walk in, put their book on a shelf. That book is then logged by the library, and the library puts it in the member of the Dewey Decimal System, the old. The library old has to put any book into circulation. Correct. They put it into circulation, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Do somebody they have walks. To? Like I show up with a book. Give, I give, say, me, give me. Let me get through the, and, okay. and I'll actually answer your question. Cool. So somebody else comes in there and says, "I want a book on cats." Okay. So the library says, "Look, let's look in the Dewey Decimal System back in the old days. Here's a book on cats. It's on shelf, you know, whatever." And you get your book of cats. Now, that's aggregation. It, it's organization and so forth. But you're getting what the person wants and what the person asked for. But what if they said that they want a book on cats and they say, well, you don't really want to see that book. Mm -hmm. Here's this other book that we're getting paid to show you uh, on cat food because you want to buy cat food. That sounds like doing a Google search. Well, now now there's wow. consideration involved, which makes goes back up to C2A. The word considers. Mm -hmm. They've now considered the content and they've now developed it. In other words, they pushed out what they didn't want and they put their interest in there.